nation of anti-apartheid activist and blank consciousness leader Bantu Stephen Biko. After days of torture in police custody, Steve Biko died and he's widely regarded as the father of black consciousness. His uh, political and social contributions were felt far and wide. Earlier I spoke to his son, Nkosinati Biko, and began by asking him how difficult it is for him and his family, remembering this day 41 years on. Mr. Biko, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, 41 years on, it must still be difficult at this time, uh, as you remember your father. Uh, yes, it has been 41 years indeed. Uh, and I can tell you from the messages that we receive from many people, both here, the continent and the world, uh, I guess his uh, legacy is stubborn. Uh, it refuses to retreat to the rear of uh, people's memories. Um, so the time is uh, both sad but also a time for celebration. I do think that he appears in a triumphant way in the conversations that people have about him. All right. So you, you were seven when he was assassinated. And I just wonder, what, what do you remember of him as a son remembering his dad, <laughs> not the kind of uh, struggle hero that uh, everybody else knows? Well, mindful of the fact that I, I could uh, at this age be his father, <laughs> yeah, I do have my childhood memories. And mm -hmm. people ask me that I almost always go back to the one very uh, vivid memory uh, when he taught me to fly a kite at the bottom of our home was a patch, a communal patch of land called green grass. And that's where you used to play as children. And that's where he taught me to fly my kite. I do think that I, I, I like the symbolism uh, in that uh, parents wish to see their children, I guess, fly high in mm -hmm. the world. And, uh, and that is always a, a wonderful memory for me. Is there anything that uh, he might have said to you in conversation that has uh, sort of stood with you? And often when you're going through life, you remember those words. He used to give me a particularly tough time around this matter of getting to and from school. So although he had a car, he just was not keen to drop me at school or pick me up. And his argument was that I would have to uh, endure the walk just like any other child in my community. Mm. And that happened even on rainy days. Uh, I guess it was part of uh, teaching uh, his children uh, how uh, to remain centered, grounded, and connected to others around them. So everybody hears the name Steve Biko. It's been the subject of songs and poetry, and uh, his words are quoted all the time. And I just wonder, when you put all of this together, plus your own personal experience, uh, how should we remember Steve Biko? What do you think, if he could speak for himself at his own sort of eulogy, what would he say about mm -hmm. himself? Well, it's, it's wonderful that he's alive in poetry, in song, and uh, in political discourse. Uh, I think the ultimate thing about him, and perhaps the ultimate way in which he should be remember, remembered, is how we take ideas and give them a practical dimension. Not only was he a thought leader politically, but uh, he and his colleagues took the ideas that they originated and gave them practical expression. So when they established the black community programs, it was to test out this notion of self-reliance. Uh, in, in that particular case, how do you build community clinics that are sustainable and can provide a quality service to even the most rural people? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think we, there's a practical dimension, uh, a sense of activism, a sense of agency required uh, if we are to fully, fully celebrate it. So he's regarded as uh, the father of black consciousness. And I wonder in 2018, would he still be teaching that? I think there's plenty of scope for, for that. Uh, he is regarded as the father of black consciousness. I do think, though, that his challenge on consciousness extended beyond black communities. He had conversations, and he writes about this, on the role of the white liberal in South Africa and how they should convert those who were on the political right to be agents of change in South Africa. Now, you look at the rise of conservatism around the world, in Europe, in the US, and indeed even in our own country. 
uh, some of the presentations in Parliament around the land question speak to the being worked to be done in that area. But I also think in respect of black communities, as we talk about trans uh, uh, changing the country and entrenching democracy, it would seem to me that uh, the ultimate fountain of new possibilities is embedded in a, a citizen uh, agency. Uh, and, and, and I think that there's plenty of work there. Mm. So the Steve Biko Foundation, you founded uh, 20 years ago, two decades later. Indeed. Tell us about what you think you've been able to achieve and the work that it continues to do. So on Monday, the 17th of September, would be the 20th anniversary. I was 26 when we started this. Uh, and I was able to do so only because of the guidance and leadership of Mrs. Biko. Uh, and we wanted to capture the interest in Biko's legacy into a vehicle for community development, uh, into a vehicle that would continue to concern itself with some of the things that were of concern to him. As we speak, gathered in King William Sound today are uh, 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 school uh, learners who are reflecting on the legacy of Steve Biko at the Steve Biko Center. It is, by the way, one of the projects of the foundation of which we are most uh, are proud. But over the years we've done wonderful work in many, many areas, uh, promoting conversations around things that matter, promoting youth leadership, and uh, our mantra at the center is memory, discovery, action. So we use history as a basis for doing this. And uh, looking back 20 years mm. on, I am grayer, <laughs> <laughs> less swifter, yeah. uh, but uh, nevertheless extremely proud of what we've been able to achieve. And in many ways, uh, Steve Beaker, I got a sense that he was really about the man at the grassroots and uh, changing that person's life. No doubt. So although he starts his activism at university, once he's banned in 1973, he's restricted to Ginsberg, the most poor of communities then as it is now. And it is in that context and mind you, there were many others like him who were part of that movement in similar contexts who were banned. Uh, it's in that context that he gives expression to some of the community development uh, ideas. And so community is at the center of uh, what was of interest to him. All right, and then perhaps finally, just a quick word on the lecture uh, that's taking place uh, this Friday. And we've got the president. Yes, indeed. Uh, so President uh, Ramaphosa will be giving the lecture uh, and uh, we open the doors at four o'clock at UNISA. Uh, it will be broadcast on SABC, I think channel 404. We've asked him, remember that his foundational politics is in black consciousness. And uh, he has now uh, uh, gone on to be the number one citizen of the country as he grapples with some of the ideas around taking the country forward. Uh, what of those uh, roots provide him with some of the answers? And hopefully he can rise to the challenge. Well, we thank you very much indeed for your time and uh, congratulations on your 20 years. Wonderful. Thank you, thank so you much. very much. Thank, thank you. you so much.